Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is quite possibly the single most spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day I have ever experienced since the day I was born. Uh, <laughs> just outrageously over-the-top, spectacularly gorgeous day. Here in the collapse of everything, as we roll into October, it is Monday, October 2nd, 2023, I guess 77 degrees today, 82 degrees tomorrow in upstate New York. Uh, anyway, while I wait for my newest uh, vacation cabin renters to get here, uh, we're just going to go back like we do so often over to medium.com and uh, we're gonna hear, would you face the camera please? You, I don't think people want to see your, that particular. There you go, well, look at this goop in your eyes, little dog. Anyway. Back to medium.com, and we're going to hear from a fellow. I, they, they keep showing up. Never heard of this man before, I don't think. I don't think showing up here a fellow named Glenn Hendricks. Glenn Hendricks describes himself as an artist, writer, poet, inventor, and entrepreneur. I do not see Doomer uh, in his uh, in his bio, uh, but I do like some of his other stories, which I need to check out. We are a doomed species. Some climate scientists are not being honest with the public. Civilization is collapsing what you can do anyway we're going to let uh, we're gonna let Glenn take us back to 1949 where he's talking about how Einstein predicted how and why Society would go sideways. All right. We're going to let Glenn Hendricks and Albert Einstein, and I think good old Dwight D. Eisenhower, we're going to rehash his favorite speech in this rant. So before he gets into uh, talking about Einstein, has a little bit of fun talking about People wishing humans would go extinct. And we're going to take a brief uh, exit from the rant and back again. But anyway, take it away, Glenn. We live in a world where everything is owned by a relatively small group of individuals in the process of accumulating all that stuff, they ruined the environment and wantonly depleted planetary, planetary resources for future generations. They have left us a precarious future full of famine, drought, and unrelenting heat with just the whiff of an extinction event. Are these people insane? The average IQ of a person worth over $10 billion is 151, and he has a link to that statement. So, they are very smart. That does not make them psychopaths, but if you ask them point blank, they would suggest you use the term socio-diverse. This is the very trait that allows them 
to manipulate media to their advantage by turning it into propaganda. The fact that they own the media doesn't hurt either, but some things they say lend credence to their being socio-diverse. Here is their response to Bernie Sanders saying that inequality should be addressed by the government and that he, Bernie Sanders, did not think billionaires should exist. Stephen Schwarzman, the billionaire CEO of Blackstone Group, replied to this, quote, maybe Bernie Sanders should not exist. <laughs> Stevens should not play poker. That is a big tell. Sociopathy should probably be added to the narcissism obvious from his book's subject matter. Others of the billionaire class were incensed, outraged, and made similar noises over Bernie's suggestion. <clears throat> Billionaires may not be the only ones to have a problem with trying to work out solutions to inequality, not to mention disregarding the safety and well-being of the human race. So what is the connection to Albert Einstein in the middle of all this? <clears throat> Back in the 1940s, Albert Einstein, a theoretical physicist and one of the greatest scientists of all time, was discussing with a gentleman the existential dilemma of the human race upon the event of another world war and how horrific that would be. Einstein described the man as intelligent and well disposed. One could assume that means the man was pleasant, maybe even jovial. The man came back at Einstein with, why are you so deeply opposed to the disappearance of the human race? All right, he's, that sounds like a, the most pleasant, even jovial gentleman. Uh, I would like to know that man. Uh, asking Albert Einstein, I would ask, if, if I could ask Albert Einstein one question, I, that would be the question I would ask Albert Einstein. Why are you, you know, a great genius, so deeply opposed to the disappearance of the human race? Damn good question. So, this attitude, I guess this attitude being not opposed to the disappearance of the human race, has been around for some time, not just among the well-to-do, but that could mean millions of people have this, what I would consider sociopathic disregard for the human race and its fu future. Hmm. Perhaps it is simple extreme selfishness disguised by an I don't give a shit attitude. Either way, it does not justify making fortunes to the detriment of humanity or the planet. So anyway, before we get back to, to uh, Albert Einstein, I, I just want to take a minute to comment on this, uh, at least on Glenn's idea of what uh, of the definition of a sociopath. You know, I was went back over there on a soft white underbelly as I do every couple of months to check out. You know, the comments from the clueless imbeciles. Uh, I, I mean, beyond morons, that I'm I'm getting close to ten thousand comments on my soft white underbelly video, and I noticed, here we go again, 
uh, you know, basically that uh, that I personally and uh, by implication anybody ag who agrees with me that humans are the problem on this planet, uh, that humans are the problem, and if humans are the problem, then the obvious solution to the problem is to get rid of the humans. Uh, if you believe that, you, uh, you know, who is it? Klaus Schwab. I was, uh, 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 I was compared to Klaus Schwab. I am a mouthpiece for the World Economic Forum course being uh, compared to Adolf Hitler and his final solution. Uh, so anyway, we're going to look up the word sociopath. So according to Glenn, anybody, Sam Mitchell and anybody who agrees that uh, the disappearance of the human race is not a bad thing for the planet is a is a person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior and a lack of conscience there you go now i might counter that uh, anybody uh, coming to the only conclusion to come with, up with to save the planet is to get rid of the problem killing the planet, which is humans, might better be defined as an ecologist. So what is an ecologist? An ecologist is a scientist who studies how animals and plants interact with their environment. And there you go. And uh, most ecologists eventually come up with the conclusion, no music on a dead planet. But anyway, guys, I just had to take that brief detour uh, your old anti-social sociopath had to take that detour while waiting on my latest uh, vacation rental guest to come uh, hang out on my property. You know, this anti-social -so sociopath has invited 8 billion people to come uh, hang out with him on his property. You know, these, anyway, I'm, I'm, I just had to do that. Let's get back to Albert Einstein. Einstein, who had seen the terrifying reality of nuclear war, had unwittingly laid the scientific groundwork for it goes on to discuss an equally great threat to mankind in this article published in the inaugural issue of Monthly Review in 1949. Take it away. Albert Einstein from, what is that, 74 years ago? 1949 is also the same year that 1984 was written. Take it away, Albert. <clears throat> Quote, The economic anarchy of capitalist society as it exists today, 74 years ago, when the population of the planet was, what, one-fourth what it is today, is, in my opinion the real source of the evil. Private capital tends to become concentrated in few hands 
partly because of competition among the capitalists and partly because technological development and the increasing division of labor encourage the formation of larger units of production at the expense of smaller ones. The result of these developments is an oligarchy of private capital, the enormous power of which cannot be effectively checked even by a democratically organized political society. This is true since the members of legislative bodies are selected by political parties, largely financed or otherwise influenced by private capitalists who, for all practical purposes, separate the electorate from the legislature. The consequences of this is that the representatives of the people do not, in fact, sufficiently protect the interests of the underprivileged sections of the population. Moreover, under existing conditions, private capitalists inevitably control directly or indirectly the main sources of information, press, radio, and education. It is thus extremely difficult and indeed in most cases quite impossible for the individual citizen to come to objective conclusions and to make intelligent use of his political rights, close quote. And so now uh, Glenn uh, dives into that juicy quote to break it down. So what did Albert Einstein say 74 years ago? This is what Einstein described as a crisis for humanity back in 1949. Let's unpack what he is describing in the paragraph above from his article as he covers causes and consequences. And, 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 and guys, j just in case you don't realize this, I want you to start if you don't already, uh, start understanding the difference between swimming around the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool and the deep end. Okay, this is paddling around, this essay is paddling around in the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool or in the top layers of the collapse onion. All right. First, Einstein hits the nail on the head by describing the concentration of wealth into ever fewer hands, a bothersome characteristic of capitalism. Uh, he describes inequality that currently is worsening across the globe, particularly in the United States. In the 1940s, CEO compensation was only 30 times the average worker's wage. What would Albert make of today's CEO compensation being an obscene 400 times what the average worker gets. Einstein realized this great wealth would allow individuals and corporations great power, so great that even democratic societies would not be able to control it. That has come to pass 
the U.S. government is effectively owned by corporations and the top 1% of the wealthy. They buy politicians by financing their political campaigns to the tune of millions upon millions of dollars. The Supreme Court's Citizens United decision allowed unlimited funds to be spent by corporations that were now blessed with all the constitutional rights of individuals by that same court. Einstein points out that representatives no longer care about the problems of the general population. We only pay them $174,000 per year with our taxes. Chump change compared to corporations paying them millions of dollars and paying less taxes than me or you. Even more amazing, Einstein <clears throat> describes how capitalist, the wealthy, owned the media. Back then, the media was only newspaper and radio. But notice how he bunched education in with those. I think this is more salient today than ever with right-wing organizations telling schools what books to have in their libraries or eliminating libraries altogether. The fact that teachers are some of the lowest paid public servants is indicative of the trend in lowering quality of education in the U.S. This makes for a more amenable, <coughs> more pliant population easily controlled by corporate or government propaganda. The media has expanded. TV, internet, Fox News, talk radio, influencers, a thousand and one ways we can be swayed to think one way or another. Einstein said it would ruin the ordinary citizen's ability to make objective political decisions. It has Going one better, it has ruined the ordinary citizen's ability to make objective financial decisions. We did not listen. Do you think so? We did not listen. We ignored Einstein. Perhaps it is because monthly review is a socialist magazine and conservative wealth-driven propaganda was hard at work even back then. We ignored World War II Supreme Allied Commander, five-star general, and 34th President Dwight D. Eisenhower when he warned us about the rising political power of the military industrial complex in his famous 1961 farewell address and uh, unless you live under a rock or, or you're just coming into this rabbit hole uh, you have heard this one a thousand times but it does bear repeating take it away Ike from, what is that, 62 years ago. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists, and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. 
only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together, close quote. Uh, Twenty years after Einstein's warning, the admonition is eerily similar. I think he meant 12 years uh, after Einstein's warning. Ike's admonition is eerily similar. What does it tell us that we ignore the sage advice of our most intelligent and respected citizens that the propaganda of the wealthy has worked only too well and we citizenry are not all that alert and knowledgeable. Huh. Perhaps we never had a chance once capitalism was set loose on the land, whether we didn't or couldn't. Just a minute matter anymore. It is too late. The damage is done. The results are the same either way. The consequences are as dire as they come, and we must face them come hell or high water, both more than likely. But anyway, I got someone here. I gotta go.